live from the Wynn Resort in Las Vegas. It's the Cube, covering .next Conference 2016. Brought to you by Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. We're back, Scott Hawkins is here. He's the Executive Director of Marketing for the Worldwide Data Center Group at Lenovo. Scott, welcome back, good to see you again. Hey Dave, how you doing, Stu? Good, thanks. So good what's, uh, what's happening with the Lenovo these days? You guys made some, obviously, big moves, coming together, getting market momentum, partnerships, give us the update. Yeah, things are going real well. You know, when you think about just even here for the event and with, uh, with the Nutanix partnership, we really couldn't be happier with where we're at. If you think about just six months ago, really announced where we were going in this direction. And if you look at a number of the plays that we've done around not only our own organic development, but these partnerships, we've really got momentum now, and especially in this area of hyperconverge hyper with Nutanix, you know, in only six months to see where we've come, announcing one platform, now we've got 11. So really good momentum, great conference here. Uh, learning more and more about uh, where we're going to go in the future with Nutanix, but just a great partnership and real, really a tribute to the entrepreneurship of both of these companies and wanting to work together and move very quickly. How did it come together? Take us back. Well, if you think back to what our product strategies were and looking at these growth segments um, with, uh, with Hyperconverged, our strategy was you know, to be nimble, and to find the best partner to go to market with, and that was Nutanix. And it really goes back to our strategy, which isn't the same strategy for every company out there. Um, we're able to be open and flexible, primarily because we don't have 20, 30 year legacy histories of products that we've got to protect. We've got a complete portfolio, server, storage, networking, services, and solutions. Um, but in this space, there was nothing that we really had to protect. Some of our competition does. Um, so we're able to go partner with the best and that's where that partnership, when we started talking with Nutanix, but you know, things aren't automatic. It doesn't just happen like that. You've got to have the same culture. You've got to have the same kind of idea of where the market is going so that you can respond very quickly because if we were going to partner with someone, we needed to get to market quickly. And if you look at, we announced that partnership in November, started shipping product late January. There's not a lot of companies that can do that. And, and the two companies working together, tightly integrated in development, go to market sales, that's really how it came about. And, and you know, if you look at, have we fulfilled our objectives so far, we have probably yeah. exceeded most of them. Mm -hmm. So Scott, well, one of the questions we had when Lenovo took over the, the System X business mm -hmm. was, you know, what, what would we see different? And you know, would something like this partnership with Nutanix have happened you know, if, if the x86 business was back in IBM? I, I don't think so, but maybe you can I'm, share. I'm glad you asked yeah. that, um, because the answer is no. Yeah. Uh, and you know that I came from, from, from IBM and we had you know, all the best thoughts around our history there, but um, IBM, like a number of other companies, they have these businesses that are entrenched and, and you're dependent upon protecting them. And that can restrict you from bringing offerings uh, to clients that are the best of the best. And uh, in that time and, and in the, the years back while we were very successful in a lot of areas, blades and high-end systems and HPC, um, probably missed out on a few strategic growth areas because we needed to protect that. You fast forward to Lenovo, and that was as we were prepping you, you, know, you and, and other uh, analysts and, and uh, folks who were interested in while we were doing this with Lenovo, we knew that once on that side of Lenovo, we'd be able to really take advantage of these opportunities very quickly. We'd be able to identify them quicker and then take advantage and get to market much faster than, than we could there, and that's what it takes. Uh, in the marketplace today as a whole, but particularly around the, uh, the X86 ecosystem. Well, and IBM was and still is in many respects, it's a very services-led company, so you had this sort of inbuilt distribution channel, that's changed. Right. Um, and so there's this two-sided coin there, I suppose, but how has that affected you know, your strategy overall? Well, I think you, you speak about services, and that's still, still going to be very important no matter what market that you're in, uh, in IT. And, and one good thing, as Stu definitely knows, is that we brought you know, all of our assets with us. Right. So we brought the engineering services capability, support capability, uh, and, and, and the portfolio. And in fact, that portfolio was, was one of the newest overall portfolios in the marketplace. Um, so we bring that to us, but what, what we had to commit to do is to continue to innovate. Um, you have to innovate quickly here. So you, know, you look at things that we talked about with you guys a couple of weeks ago around uh, new uh, networking operating systems or new uh, hyperscale platforms with the SD350, 
uh, and, and other areas, software defined storage, you know, we're going to continue to innovate there, but we're also going to look to, to where we can bring the most value to clients very quickly. We're going to partner. Yeah, it was, uh, as, as you know, I was at the Lenovo Tech World mm -hmm. uh, just a couple of weeks ago in San Francisco, and what was really interesting is YY, you know, <laughs> great, great presence, real good. He was playing virtual reality games with uh, BK, the CEO of yeah. Intel, but he's like, okay, um, we're going to take five minutes and talk about the boring infrastructure stuff, yeah. and then we'll get back to the cool stuff. Is that okay? Plus, you come here to Nutanix, I mean, you've got 2,500 people here, you know, clapping and super excited about infrastructure. Right. You know, what, what, what's your thoughts on the community? It's definitely yeah. not, and I think, the, the, I, think, I think most people knew why I was probably poking fun at that. It may not have come across that. You can imagine oh, that, yeah. you know, beads of sweat <laughs> broke out of my forehead when he said that. But, um, it, 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 and in that keynote and, and how we, we worked up to those announcements across the whole spectrum of Lenovo, the point was, whether it's mobility, virtual reality, all of these things, it's all running on infrastructure and data centers somewhere. Uh, and, and part of the value proposition around Lenovo overall is that we have expertise in all of those areas, particularly in the mobile business, um, so that we understand where the market's going and the stress loads that that's going to put on the data center. So we're going to continue to develop the solutions that are going to satisfy for that, but that was definitely interesting. You're not going to let us forget that either. What's, <laughs> what's <laughs> How would you describe, Scott, the shared vision between you and Nutanix for the data center of the future? I think both of us share the same vision when you think about, um, and, and you could put in a ton of buzzwords here, journey to cloud or that. I think, um, and, and it was spoke about in the keynote this morning, if you think, if you try to say where is the data center going to be 10 to 20 year, years from now, I don't know that anybody really knows. Things are just developing so quickly. I mean, last, you know, 10 years ago, what were we talking about? Still talking about virtualization, early cloud, and a lot of talk about form factors. Now it's uh, software-defined storage, it's hyper-converged, hyper-scale. Um, but with Nutanix and, and uh, Lenovo, I think we share that same vision that customers are going to look um, for flexibility, um, and they're going to look for the best solution. The days are probably behind us where a customer is going to be, you know, a, look for a sole provider of technology and in the hot areas that come around like a hyperconverge, hey, I'm going to wait three to four years for my incumbent supplier to develop that capability. They're not going to do that. They're going to want the flexibility. They're going to move into the cloud. They're going to be able to come back, find middle ground and hybrid. Uh, and that's where we align, um, I think, both independently but together with Nutanix on that vision of where hyperconverge but larger cloud operating models um, within, within enterprises and particularly around the, the uh, consumerization of that experience, right? No one's gonna, gonna uh, take the time to mess around with, with poor usability and things like that in, in the future. Well, you're making a great point. I mean, 10 years ago, there was no iPhone. Right. <laughs> we were talking about, I mean, mobility was kind of this problem looking for a, a solution, looking for a problem, and right. then all of a sudden it became this huge opportunity. And, one wonders, okay, is, you know, what's next? We, we can't assume that nothing is on the horizon in the next 10 years that is going to totally disrupt and change the, the center of gravity. Uh, 10 years ago, I remember discussions going on about you know, the burgeoning explosion of text messaging. So we, right. were, you know, we weren't even on video yet. I mean, it's just crazy when you think about where we've come. It's crazy. How about, um, there hasn't been virtually any talk about IoT here, although we saw drones. <laughs> um, it's an opportunity, it's enormous, there's, there's tons of discussion going on and buzz and it, and it appears like it's got legitimate legs. What, uh, what's Lenovo's take on that topic? I think, I think folks are just maybe, it, that IOT may be the fastest buzzword to become tired <laughs> in the industry, but the fact is, and, and, and it's also not new, right? There's been, been this uh, yeah, right. load of sensors around forever, but now everything's you know, wireless and, and over the network. Um, you know, when, when we look at where this is going, we definitely feel like there's a big play in, in edge of network uh, technology servers and that, and we're exploring uh, solutions with that. Um, but it's also going to come down, you know, back to while everything is on the fringe and on the, on the edge with IoT, it's still going to come back to computing capacity in the data center. And that's where, while we're talking a lot here about hyperconvergent cloud, you know, you still have big data, which is almost seems like it's, you know, an old term now, but getting into things of, of big data analysis and taking that data, harness it, and, uh, and, and making decisions. And, and even the stuff uh, talked about earlier around contextual, uh, you know, the contextual area of, of this information and things like that. 
you know, we're going to continue to look at, at what it's going to take to be a player in that as well with, with IoT. It's, it's massive. And again, sort of like in Hyperconverge with so many folks getting into this business, IoT, even that ecosystem is going to be massive. So you're going to have to be able to work with a number of suppliers. Yeah. So Scott, back back to Nutanix piece. Uh, you know, we've had conversations with them. as, you know, how do they, you know, maintain the integrity of the channel while working with the OEMs? And their answer is they've got some kind of pretty stringent OEM, you know, mm -hmm. deal registration pieces. Which, um, can you speak about, you know, how Lenovo fits into that? How you differentiate? Um, you know, why you're okay with that? As because, you know. Boy, I, you know, I, I would look at Dell, Lenovo, Nutanix. Yeah. You know, there, there's definitely lots of opportunity for collisions. Yeah, it, it certainly is, and I think you, you know, Nutanix has a sound strategy in, in orchestrating that traffic of opportunity because I think, as as was said earlier today, um, their their customers are going to look for solutions for multiple suppliers, so they're going to satisfy that by partnering with a number of, of different suppliers. Um, and so you got you got to orchestrate that traffic because you don't want to have customers um, that that have a bad experience in trying to acquire the technology. For us, um, we support it. Um, we feel like we have a unique value proposition. Um, you know, as more players are in this market, it, it builds the market base of customers that are looking at it. We've done our own research. You know, the uh, the adoption rates in our own research um, say that you know 60 to 80 percent of customers. Um, out there uh, in some recent surveys we did are going to acquire hyperconverge appliances in the next three years. So um, we know the opportunity is big enough for us to get our fair share and more there. Um, and our value proposition, value proposition around bringing what we feel like is the best hardware, a deeply integrated appliance with a, with a long future roadmap, as well as these workload optimized models, as I said, going from one to 11 models, that is all about tailoring a a Lenovo and Nutanix solution um, to the workloads clients are deploying. Is that a remote office, back office? Is an, S an SMB kind of entering this market? Is it compute heavy? Is it storage heavy? Is it flash? So, you know, that's how we're going to approach the market and find our share of that market and grab it. Scott, can you talk about the, the channel a little bit more? So, I remember when IBM announced the deal, I think it was announced in January, right after Q4, yep. so, so it was not the totally disrupt the channel, but right. I remember we were at Edge that year, which is in the fall, and mm -hmm. the channel was still pretty freaked out. Um, yes. How were you able to navigate through that, uh, solidify those channel relationships, and then I got a follow-up question. Well, I think it, it was mainly to, to, to leverage those relationships. You know, many of those folks that were working with those partners came with us to Lenovo. And, and look, you always have to prove to people when, when there's times of change that things are going to remain constant. And I think we've done a good job of solidifying those relationships with business partners, the same technology, the same innovation, not disrupting the models and giving them the support. And I think a lot of the partners have seen um, in the channel model and, and Lenovo overall, we're able to be more nimble um, and more uh, proactive, but also react quicker when they need help uh, in the channel. So I think we've done a great job in, in taking advantage of the relationships we have, and we've also expanded the channel. Um, so we've, we've increased our market coverage in the channel. Well, that's kind of my follow-up question, is, is, is the channel is evolving. I mean, it always is, but it's really starting to change. You got you know, sort of box movers who still sell probably most of the, mm -hmm. do most of the revenue, but you've got the solutions guys. We've always been talking about solutions, but it seems like suppliers like yourself covet the channel partners that can really understand whether it's whatever workload, Oracle, SAP, right. you know, big data, Microsoft, I mean, that level of expertise is increasingly important. And then you've got this whole hoodie crowd in the DevOps world. You know, maybe it's not a direct channel, but they're certainly an influencer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and obviously the service provider. So the, the channel shift sort of coincided with the move for IBM sell off its right. x86 business. So what's happening there? You said you've expanded the channel, presumably into some of those solution partners, or how is it expanding? Yeah, exactly, and, and, and to the point about solution partners, as this market, as these different segments like Hyperconverge grow, those solution providers become even more important because they're going to invest in having the, the, the subject matter expertise and the technologists in their own camp to be able to sell to their customers. So it takes 
that specialization that usually you find mostly in your solution providers, but other partners as well. But we've got to cater to that and we've got to foster that. And, and one thing we're doing is making a major investment globally in, in expanding our training offerings. It's an area we needed, we heard from from our solution providers and our resellers and distributors that we needed to do uh, deeper training. And so we're investing in that. One of our, our largest investments that we're making right now is expanding our education offerings for them to um, enable their sellers to, to sell and understand the market as we see it in our portfolio. Um, back to the expansion of the channel, you know, that, was, that was a move where again, maybe in the where we were before, we had to tightly protect that channel model and have fewer uh, channel partners because we were having to protect a number of other businesses and things like that from from uh, colliding. Here, you know, we, we have a number of partners and, and if folks want to uh, sell uh, uh, Lenovo Enterprise Systems, we want to help them do it. A lot bigger swim lane now. Definitely, and, that, and that's the X86 market. I mean, it's, it's the dominant, by far, we could have said this eight years ago, but it's the dominant share of the, of the IT space now. Yeah, well, and again, let's face it, inside of IBM, it was always this sort of stepchild that, you know, okay, we'll you know, keep saying the right things, and, and uh, now it's like Lenovo loves this business. Mm -hmm. It's like embracing it, so that's got to feel good. Well, it's the best of both worlds, right? You, you're, you're in a place that, that's going to get the investment to grow kind of unleashed to a degree so that we can, we can go into any of the markets that we need to, as we said before, um, but also there's, there's the protection of the innovation. And that's what you've seen. So you'll, you've seen so far. You'll continue to see that um, it, it, Lenovo didn't acquire the business just to get the assets. It, it acquired the business to be able to invest. And if you look at what they've done in other businesses like the PC business, it's not the same business, but um, they took that business from low share to number one in the world. So that's the model we're going to follow here. Continue to invest, focus on customer experience and uh, and innovation and then wrap that up and, and you know, our strategy is going to be to help clients remain open and flexible uh, so that they can pivot when the market's turning and, and bring the best solutions to them. Right. So, so Scott, the, I mean, the HX solution is pretty new. We expect there's the, the typical, you know, training and building the funnel, but what, 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 can, what can you expect to see from, what can we expect to see from Lenovo and Nutanix going down the road, Matt? Well, yeah, I think you're going to continue to see the traction we have. You know, we, we trained Within a number of months, over a we certified over a thousand of our sellers to sell HX series um, partners. Um, we're going to continue to expand our go-to-market marketing uh, to, to to acquire new customers. So there's more of that, but also look for deeper integration in our man our own management stack. We have some of that today with X Clarity, but we're continuing to work closely with Nutanix to develop even deeper integration in the management stack because you see a, a, a ton of the focus. Um, from Nutanix and a the reason they're successful is that is that uh, that user experience. So we want to latch onto that and find capabilities in our management stack that can integrate and make it even easier for customers. Are, are there any applications or ISVs that might be you know prime targets? That's, to hit? A, that's a great question because I wanted to to address that. We talked about combining organic development along with you know partnering to bring that development. You know, a good example of how you can do both of those and then bring them together is you take an HX series platform and, and certify it with, with, uh, with SAP, right? With, uh, with their solutions. So that's what we're going to continue to do is what can we do with this platform with Microsoft, with, with Oracle, with SAP, with other ISVs and bring tailored solutions to that. And, and again, back to the workloads, that's where we have a number of, of uh, different models that we've tailored toward SQL or to SAP or to Oracle database. So we've got we've got a lot of uh, potential to go there, but we're, we're working on that as we go now. All right, Scott, we have to leave it there, but uh, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, giving us the update on, on the Novo, and great. really appreciate it. Thank you for the time. All have right. a great time. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest right after this short break. We're live from Las Vegas. This is theCUBE.